No, but why would they not? If they've been Hi, everyone. Them, yeah, like... I'm Drew. I'll be talking about reverse engineering the Chrysler Pacifica and hopefully convince some of you that have cars that are maybe not supported that you can make a big community contribution, reverse engineering your car, make some contributions, and it's not sort of as scary as hard as it might look in some cases. Uh, so a few years ago, I ended up driving more than I wanted to, and the driving was not really chill. So I wanted a way to sort of improve that, heard about open pilot, didn't support my car, that kind of sucks. So I went ahead and, and figured I'd make it work. Put it up to my mouth, like that. Right there. All right, perfect. All right, so as most of you probably know, there's an OBD2 port. I'll skip over some of this stuff, um, but a lot of it was, uh, the community was super helpful when I was trying to make the first connections. Buying an OBD2 connector had like a 30 day lead time from China. Um, so Energy sent me one, which was great. Um, on some of the older models, they had plenty of uh, can see messages that would go across the bus. But of course, you only get so much from the OBD2, things that you don't actually need for the lane keeping. So we need to go in and actually um, pull out the lane keeping as a connector. Um, this is pretty straightforward. Just take off the black cover, just like all of you that installed open pilot in your own cars already now. Uses a Mini 50, Molex connector, pretty straightforward. Links there, and you start to get other signals as well on the Proto Fusion CAN bus. You can see the sort of radar messages that have a, a nice consistent pattern, which is always great. So now the question is, now that we have this lane keeping connector, how do you actually go in and figure out what the pinout is? Press the microphone yeah. on your chin. I'll press it on my chin. All right. I'll keep it right there. See if I can follow instructions. And so you can go in there and, and some of this stuff, um, the stuff, the most obvious thing is it's 12 volts between the power and the ground that you need to actually thing. For the CAN bus messages, it's more like a four volt difference or something like that. Or you can cheat, and a lot of the manufacturers have uh, specs listed online. So Mopar has this DCC tool site, which lists off the actual connectors. So this made it a lot easier. So it provides access to two CAN buses, the main CAN bus, the CAN-C private fusion that has the radar and everything like that on there. So this made it quite a bit easier to, to actually do. So some of the adventures of wiring it up. You can wire it up to jumpers, things like that, not actually too difficult. Um, you can buy the crimpers, the, the leads and everything like that. Um, so you probably need a crimper, right? So how much do you think the crimper would cost? 300? 20 bucks. All right. 650, you're getting close. I would have guessed, you know, Ethernet crimpers I bought last week were like 20 bucks. But yeah, it's like a thousand bucks for a crimper. <laughs> Which is pretty insane. So you can just use one of those pliers, crimp it up. The first version that I had here crimped it up and everything. I unfortunately left the wires a little bit short. So it sort of propped up the, the breadboard. You know, that just had the wires sort of plugged in there with a, a box so that it would actually stay there. Drove around with this, collected some data from the Panda to see what actually it looked like. Uh, moved up to using a Perma Proto board, tried to remember how to solder. That worked a little bit better. Uh, could actually zip tie it in there and this lasted about six months or something like that uh, with the Eon to get enough data to actually drive it. Uh, pulled up Eagle and figured I should do something a little bit better when I was actually sending them out to people rather than just telling people to start soldering. Um, not too bad to use, pretty straightforward. I think the most difficult thing to do is actually putting sort of the draft logo in there, because it's like 400 different uh, parts and makes the computer slow down. Made a bunch of them, mailed them out to pretty much everyone in Discord that wanted them, um, which is great, got people sort of using it. And this is a good tip too, if you're trying to get your car upstreamed into the community uh, ports and get your code accepted, get people actually using it. Uh, so this is a little bit of work to send out boards to everyone so that people are actually using it. Made some cases, 3D printing. This is eventually what uh, Kama themselves made, so a lot prettier, a lot nicer sort of 3D printed case, but the same sort of Osh Park purple as well for the boards. So now I'll go in a little bit into the, uh, you know, some, some fun things of like when you get the electronics slightly wrong, you get all the like nice warning errors in the dashboard and everything. And this is a fun thing that happened when I was testing out maybe the the first official Kama FCA giraffe and plugged it in. It was some sort of a prototype, didn't quite work. You know, the shifter starts going crazy, you can't turn off the car. What do you do? Well, you pull the fuse. All right, so I know I can look it up. Yeah, the fuse I want is like F78 or something or these other ones. It's raining, it's night, it's dark. Can't tell what's going on. Open up the car and this is what the fuse looks like. 
I'm frantically thinking like, where is F57 or whatever, or M12? They're not labeled, but I failed to, to realize they're all just printed in the back of the cover, which actually saves some time and was nicer. I'll go into a little bit of the software sort of thing, skip over some of the DBC things. The question is, how can you actually figure out the signals? Um, so has anyone here used Cabana? Graph things out, yeah? All right, so Cabana is super useful for sort of like poking around, graphing things out, looking for different speeds and other things like that. So you probably have a rough idea there. You know, this is sort of what you want your signal to look like. This is a pretty good thing. You just choose some, some bits in the message, it graphs out like this, you know you have something. You need to figure out what. Sometimes you get messages that look like this, and this is generally an indicator that some of the high bits are cut off, where you're, you know, have a pretty good signal and then jumps up, just add a few high bits. Similarly, if it looks a little bit pixelated, maybe that's just the way it is. Maybe you cut off some low bits. Uh, sometimes you get to use math. You can see here we have the steering angle, which is a nice smooth curve, and then we have steering rate, which is a derivative of it. And so if you don't know that, and you figure out one, you're like, oh, this other one is a derivative of this other signal. You can start to sort of guess at what it is. Sometimes you get signals like this. Um, and for this, you know, it could be a counter, it could be a checksum, it could be noise. And the, the key here is just to zoom in, sort of see what it looks like. In this case, it's a counter. You get something like this, it could be a checksum. In order to verify it's a checksum, you want to go ahead and, and see if like all the input always ends up with the same checksum at the end. Pretty straightforward. Figuring what the actual checksum is can be another challenge. Um, in this case, the first version I had just built a lookup table. Because there are only so many steering messages that you have between like negative 128 and positive 128 times whatever hex 10 for the counter. But luckily some people, uh, Charlie Miller and Bellis, had already published um, the checksum through reversing some firmware years ago for this GPAC, which is pretty nice. Um, I'll talk a little bit about a quick technique as well. So let's say you have this giant dump of, of data in Cabana where you've collected like, what if you want to find a particular signal? And the rough strategy here that works pretty well is you record a bunch of background data, but not doing the thing that you care about. So let's say you care about like, what signal is for the driver's side door being open? Record a lot of data, but never open the driver's side door. Then record a short amount of data where you actually open the driver's side door and maybe close it. And then you go through all that data and you look for the bits and say the second case, that don't exist in the first case. And so there's a tool that's, I think, in the Panda repository committee that does basically this. And it goes through, and here we can see, like, running it with this background data, looking for the door opening is. It gives a couple examples. The first sort of potential candidate is actually just a slow moving counter. We can see sort of like the uh, second byte from the end, you know, the high nibble increments gradually. But then this other signal 820 is what we actually want. We can sort of see the door open. But it makes it easy to sift through this large sea of data to try to find what you actually want. We'll see if the clicker works. There we go. Skip through some of these, just using Panda. The messages are pretty straightforward. Um, so now let's steer the car. So in the case of Chrysler, what we basically have to send is a heartbeat message. It sort of keeps all the ECUs active and everything's in a good state. You can send this HUD dashboard message um, which is sort of less important, sent a lot slower. And then the actual steering command, um, which has a checksum in the counter, which you have to get if it sort of skips messages for more than 25 milliseconds, it doesn't actually work. This code there, we'll sort of skip through this sort of thing and get through a video. We'll see if the video actually plays, but maybe not, it's just an image. Um, and the image as well. But any questions about porting cars or any sort of uh, other things? No, but if you want to port your car, go ahead and do it. Feel free to talk to me. Um, a key part of getting it upstream is making sure that people are actually using it. Um, I think in my case also, I let some let Kama borrow the car for about a month when I was out of town. So they're able to take it out and, and do the verification as well. Um, but hopefully with their new space and a big parking lot full of cars, they'll be able to test it out there. But thank you all.